welcome to today's video. I literally just finished making these DIYs and I think they turned out so cute. I'm so excited to show them to you. They're super easy to make and super affordable. So I really think you're gonna like them. So yeah, today I'm just gonna show you how I make them step by step. So let's just get started. We're gonna start with the easiest one. So I went to a thrift store and I got these vases. I thought they were cool looking. Hated the colors, but I knew they had potential. So the first thing I did was clean them. They just had like a small layer of dust. So I wanted to get rid of that. And this one also had some tape. I don't know why, but I got rid of that as well. I feel like I could have gone to the dollar store and gotten cheaper vases, but I really like the shape of these and I was already there, so I got them. <laughs> then I went to Walmart and I got acrylic paint in white and also beige. I was trying to go for something very light and subtle. And after adding a lot of white, I finally got the color that I wanted, which is this color. I'm not sure what you would call it, but I thought it was super pretty. I wanted to change the finish of the paint, so I added some baking soda to make it look a little bit more rustic and give it some texture. As you can see, I did not have a method to paint this. I just wanted to get that first layer on there. This first layer was going to be covered anyway, so... It doesn't really matter how it looks. And just a little tip if you're doing something like what I'm doing, you can put your hand through a bag and hold the vase like that. That way you don't get paint all over your hand and your arms. But anyways, I knew that the baking soda wasn't gonna give me as much texture as I wanted. So what I decided to do was add ground pepper. Just sprinkle it on top of the fresh paint so it would stick to it. And then I immediately went back in with more paint, but this time I did it with a napkin to get even more texture. And then I just let it dry. Then I just did the same thing to the other vase. And what I really love about this DIY is that you can go crazy with it and be as sloppy as you want because it doesn't really matter. Like I wanted these little imperfections, these little lines with the brush and everything. I wanted those. I did not want to waste any paint and since it was such a unique color, I decided to put the whole container in a bag so it wouldn't dry out while I was waiting for the vases to dry. Once it was dry, I just went back in with the last layer of paint but this time I ended up just tapping the brush on the vase with the paint because I wanted to add even more texture and I think it worked very well. And yes, what I'm using is an old makeup brush. Uh, yeah. RIP to that brush. <laughs> and this is how they turn out. What do you think? I really love them. I think they look beautiful and timeless and you can use them as decor for basically any space. For this next DIY, we're gonna start by making holes in this styrofoam ball. And the only way to make a clean cut through styrofoam is with heat. So I decided to ruin this metal straw and get it super hot and make the holes with that. If you're doing the same thing I'm doing, just know that you're not going to be able to use this straw ever again. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> but anyways, I quickly realized that using the candle was going to be a lot better. So that's why I switched. And here's a couple of things that would change if I were to make this DIY again. First, I would do this outside. I don't know if you can see the smoke coming out of the straw, but I'm sure that's not healthy. <laughs> I would also wear gloves or something to protect my hands because this is a dangerous thing I'm doing. And even though I didn't burn myself, I could have. So just be super careful. And the last thing is that I recommend making the holes a little bit bigger. Just move the straw around and make it a little bit bigger because if not, you're gonna struggle like I did. <laughs> to paint the balls, we're basically gonna do the same thing we just did. So we're just gonna paint this first layer with black and white to make gray. Again, this first layer doesn't really matter because we're gonna cover it anyways. So just go crazy with it. And I would recommend using either straws or chopsticks as a stand for the balls. If you like the smooth finish, you can just stop right here. But I wanted to hide the little lines that styrofoam usually has. And I also really like the pepper method. So I just went back in and sprinkled some pepper on there. I just thought it would make it look more realistic, you know? So I waited a little bit for the paint to dry and then I went back in with the second layer of paint. And again, I wanted to make it look as realistic as possible. 
So that's why I didn't cover it all with a perfect layer of gray paint. I just wanted some patches of white and black here and there, you know, just to make it look like real rock. And this is what they look like after they dried. I'm pretty sure I ended up making 16, but you can make as many as you want, depending on how long you want your rope to be. So now we're going to make the tassels that are going to go at the end of the rope. So we're just going to grab some twine and wrap it around our fingers a few times. You can make it as thick as you want, so if you want to grab more twine to make it even bigger, go ahead. But I like mine like this, so I just left it like that. Then grab the little piece of twine and wrap it around. And when you're tying everything together, make sure that the knot that you make stays inside, that way it's nice and hidden. Now we're going to make a cut at the opposite side of where the knot is. And don't worry, you don't have to make it perfect because we're going to go back and make everything even. So don't worry about that right now. If you have to move the middle piece a little bit just so it's centered, do that. And now we're going to grab a little piece of twine. And we're going to wrap it around everything just to make like a little head for the tassel. And now the last thing we're going to do is go back in and trim all the little pieces that are sticking out just to make everything nice and even. And ta-da! You have the first tassel and now we have to repeat the whole thing and make a second one. We are finally ready to actually start making the rope now. So I grabbed about 2 meters of twine. I should have done double that but I didn't. But anyways, I grabbed one end of the twine and got it through the top of one of the tassels that we made. Once it was centered, I made a double knot just to separate the tassel from the balls that we had. Then I just went to the other end of the twine and started getting the balls through it. After each ball, I made a double knot and I always made sure that the knot was as close to the balls as possible. And here's what I was talking about earlier. I just wish I made the holes a little bit bigger. The twine just did not want to go through, so I had to make this weird tip with silicone. And that kind of worked, but this whole thing could have been avoided if I just made the holes a little bit bigger. So just learn from my mistakes. <laughs> And halfway through, I also ran out of twine, so I had to make like a weird knot and add more twine. But don't worry, you're not gonna have to do all of this as long as you use 4 meters of twine instead of 2 like I did. <laughs> but yeah, if you avoid the two mistakes that I made, this should be uh, super easy. <laughs> To finish it off, we're just gonna tie the other tassel that we had already made to the end of the rope and that's it, we're done! So what do you think? I seriously love it. You can put it on top of books, you can put it on a shelf, literally anywhere you want. I love this DIY. It is so easy to make and also so affordable. I got everything from the dollar store. So the plastic bowl was only like $1.25 and the glass was like $1.50, $1.75, something like that. Super cheap. The super glue also got it from there. But anyways, the first thing that I did was clean the bottom of the bowl and the glass just to make sure that there was any dust on there. Then I applied a fair amount of super glue on the glass and stuck the two together. And I just love how I was able to find a bowl and a glass that actually match each other. It is obviously not necessary, but I think it looks good. So I just ended up pressing it down a lot, but what you can also do is just put some books or something heavy on top, just until the glue dries completely. To paint this bowl, I basically did the same thing with it for the first DIY and I just mixed the paint with baking soda. I used a lot more baking soda with the first layer and I just love the way it turned out. It looks so rustic and old, I love it. 
So I did two layers of that and then for the final layer, I mixed paint, baking soda, and Mod Podge, which is a matte sealer that I also got from the dollar store. I just wanted to make it a little bit more durable, but I'm sure you would be okay without the sealer. So what do you think? Does it look like we just paid so much money for it? I love it. I really want to know which one was your favorite, so make sure you leave a comment down below letting me know. And if you decide to make any of them, make sure you DM me a few pictures. I would love to see your creations. But yeah, this is the end of this video. Make sure you subscribe down below so we can hang out again. And if you like this type of content, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Follow me on Instagram and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.